Good morning, guys. Um, I'm going to demonstrate for you our next project. I have it titled Mountain View, but um, in truth, it could be any beautiful sunset or landscape or mountain view or anything that you want it to be. I am supplying you with a photo. It'll be the same photo that I'm using for my demonstration, but I do encourage you to go to Pixabay or to go to any of the um, photo sites that um, I have linked for you so that you can select your own photo. Um, to give you a sense of what we're going to do with this project, um, we're going to, and I have I have finally organized my folders, so let me locate the image that I would like to show you. Um, Photoshop, there we go. Oh, wrong Photoshop. Photoshop projects, there we are. All right, so um, this project, which I call Mountain View, but can certainly, like I said, be any type of a landscape that you want to um, that you want to try is going to look like this in the end okay we are going to take one image and we are going to use something similar to adjustments but these are adjustments that you are able to do individually to each photo that you use typically when I create adjustments, the adjustments will occur to the entirety of what I'm, I'm creating. So, you know, in previous, um, in previous practices, we've been working with one photo and we're still working with one photo, but we're going to be doing some different things to them, um, such as copying and pasting and um, flipping and, and just doing some various things like that and of course we'll be resizing so that the page fits what we're able to do and we're going to try some new things that maybe we haven't done already in the uh, regular adjustments so this is going to be called these are called new layer adjustments so it's it's still adjustments it's still very similar to what we've done but um, we're going to take it a couple steps further so you're going to learn some new things. So um, I'll close this out right now. And um, I'm going to create new. Okay, up till this point, I've had you open things. Um, you basically just opened a photograph. Well, now we want to create a document or a um, uh, an image that is going to be um, close to the size that we think we need it to be. Um, it's definitely going to be vertical in orientation. 300 PPI is a good PPI because we may want to print this. This is not going to be something that would merely be for the web. Now, of course, when we save it as a JPEG, it would be 72 PPI. But um, as far as the Photoshop version goes, we want it to be 300 PPI. Um, in terms of the size of this, here we have an eight and a half by 11. These are some of the like the preset um, settings that we have. If you look up here, you can see some others. If you go to photo, this kind of gives you some standard photo sizes. If you were going to print something that was meant to be for a photo, if you go to print, you're going to see that you get a few other options here. Um, the sizes are different. Some um, are in inches, some are in millimeters, it just sort of depends. But these are your presets. Um, art and illustration, if I was making a poster, I might go here. A postcard, I might go here. Uh, if I was designing something for the web, you'll notice these are all 72 PPI because we know that anything that's going to be for a website needs to have a low PPI so that it will load quickly. Um, and we can even do mobile, okay? We can do mobile devices and we can do film and video. So um, it would be kind of cool if we were able to get to the film and video aspects 
of Photoshop, although there are programs that are designated specifically for film and video. And so most people don't necessarily use Photoshop for film and video, but it is, it is something you can do. So um, I'm going to take us to print. And I think I'll, I'll start us out with a legal, okay? Um, no, mm, trying to go decide between legal and tabloid. We'll start with legal because we can always enlarge. So the legal is eight and a half by 11, okay? I'm going to call this um, sunset views. Uh, I'm gonna put my name first, Mrs. C, sunset views version, eh, we'll say three because I truly can't remember how many of these I've done. Okay, it's currently set on RGB, which is, which is okay. The reason it will typically um, set itself at RGB instead of CMYK, um, CMYK we know is what we would need if we were going to print this, is because while we're looking at it on the screen, we're gonna get a better view of the colors if we're looking at it in RGB. When we're ready to print it, that's when we transfer it to CMYK and you will see a change in colors. And sometimes at that point, people will make adjustments to their colors because they realize what it's gonna look like when it prints. But while you're looking at it on the screen, you wanna see the colors as rich as they can possibly be. So we stick with RGB. I'm gonna click create and this looks like the size. Now. Like I said, I can adjust this size. So if this size um, turns out not to be the right size, we will we will make it uh, fit what we need. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to go to File, and now I'm going to go to Open, okay? And when I go to Open, this is the photo that I used before, and I'm just gonna use this photo since I have a sample for it. Um, the one I do in class um, as a demonstration, may be different. I may decide to do a different one, but for this video, I'll use this one since, um, since I've got the sample for it already. So I've got this beautiful picture here, and I wanna carry this picture to my work. My work is called Mrs. C Sunset Views version three. So how do I get this picture over here? What I do is I go to the rectangular marquee, which is this tool right here, and I click on it. And then you see these crosshairs and you place those crosshairs right on the corner and you drag until you get to the other corner. When you feel like you've selected the whole thing, if you let go, you have what we call marching ants. Okay, there are these little white and black um, dashes and it sort of tells you that this is your active area and you're ready to do with it as you want. So what do I want to do with it? I want to move it. So I'm going to go to this tool right here, which funny enough is called the move tool. So I'm going to click on the move tool. Now, when I place my arrow, you see that little, the little arrow there with the scissors. When I place it on top of the picture and I still have the marching ants going all around this picture. And then I left click my mouse. As I start dragging, you notice that the picture is moving and I'm carrying it to my sunset views. And now I'm gonna carry it down and I'm gonna let go and, and look, I've got, I've got my picture, it's right there. Now that I have the picture, I don't need this one anymore, okay? So I'm going to X. Now when it asks you if you wanna save it or if it asks you, it didn't ask me, but um, usually it will ask you if you wanna save it don't, don't hit save because you want it to, you want it to, to return to its original format. And if you hit save, it'll save it with those marching ants and all of that. And you don't, you don't want to do that. You just want to save that picture in case you want to use it for something else, in case you need to do this again and you just need to get that picture. So you never want to destroy the original picture. You want the original picture to stay um, as usable as it can be. So I've got my first picture here. Now I'm gonna do some zooming in here. Now, I think we've discovered that with remote PC, 
using shortcuts isn't really um, possible. So to zoom in, don't forget, you're going to go to view and there's your zoom in. And just try to get it as close as you can get it where you can see it well enough. Um, you don't necessarily want it too big. You just want it to be um, so that you can see it. And that's going to depend on what your screen is looking like. As, as we've talked about, remote PC does tend to give us a very small view. And that makes, that makes it a lot more difficult to, to do the things we want to do. But make it, make it whatever size you need to make it so that you feel like you see what you need to see. Okay, so I have it like this right now. Now I'm going to be copying this seven times. All right, um, so here's my first layer. Okay, and um, I can just keep it named layer one because you know, it, it, there's not really a point in naming these um, unless I want to name them based on what I end up doing to them. But I think I'll just keep them named as layer. And you notice the background stays white. Okay, it's just a white background and it's locked. If for any reason I didn't want a white background, I could change the color of the background, okay, to any color that I want. Um, unfortunately, I didn't have colors i didn't have background selected there so that's why i've covered my picture so i'm going to uh i'm going to control z and whoops and get rid of that if i if i wanted that background to have a color then i would have to make sure i clicked on background then went to my solid color and now you see now the purple is behind it but um, again i don't necessarily want that i'm just trying to show you um, how you can change the color of your backgrounds if you choose to do that. But we're going to be covering this whole thing, so the background is going to make no difference. Now right now, this is very large, and I want to be able to place two next to each other. So I'm going to click on this layer. You can see that it's selected because it's the darker gray. I'm going to go to um, Edit. I'm going to go to transform and then I'm going to slide over to scale and if you all recall scale has to do with size so I'm going to scale this in a bit slide it to the top now I'm not exactly sure where the center is if I wanted to know for sure I could um, turn on my grids if I went to view um, Let's see, whoops, yeah, where's my grids? Okay, um, okay, it's, it wasn't highlighting my, my grids for me, so We'll, we'll not worry about that for now. Our, our goal is not for this assignment to um, worry about whether we are able to snap to the grid, which is something that you do when you're trying to really line things up. But what I do want to do is I've got this photo, and every time I left click on it, you'll notice that it highlights in my layers panel. So what I'll do is I'll go to edit, I'll go to copy, I'll go to edit and I'll go to paste and so now I have a second version of this here okay now's where I might decide that I'm going to make some changes okay this is currently not wide enough my my document is not wide enough so if I click on the background and I go to my um, crop tool here I can literally drag this out so that it fits and both of those pictures fit in there perfectly. Now I have to click this check mark to make sure that sticks. Now here's the only issue, whoops, I have to make sure I click away after you, um, after you use your crop tool and you click your check, um, click away from the 
crop tool. If you click the move tool, you should be good. Um, for, for some reason, the crop tool sometimes likes to stay on. So, um, uh, so I have it a little bit like that. I have a tiny strip of white space in between. I'm going to just leave that. We'll see, see if I like that when it's all said and done. Now there's something I want to do. I want these to have a symmetrical look. And right now these two images are exactly the same and I want to flip the one on the right. So when I click on it, of course you see layer two is highlighted. I will now go to um, uh, edit. I will go to transform. I will go all the way down to flip and then I'm going to flip horizontal. Okay. Because it's just, it's just a horizontal flip. And so, so now you see this cool little image that I've created here. And I guess the more I look at this, I really don't think I want that white space there. So I'm going to bring them together, which means I might go back to my background, go back to my crop tool and just slide this in a fraction of an inch to get rid of the white. Click check again. No more white. Click the move tool so that that crop tool is completely deactivated. All right, so um, I've got these two images here and this is how easy this is going to be. I'm going to left click. I've got the move tool on. I'm going to left click and just grab both of those pictures. Okay. Um, I'm going to go to edit um, and I'm going to go to uh, copy, I'm going to go to edit, and I'm going to go to paste. All right, so now with these two images, I'm going to place those right under. Okay, try to make sure there's no white space between. Right, and since I've already copied it, I don't have to copy it again. I can just keep pasting. And ideally, I would be able to do copy V or control V, or I would be able to do uh, um, command V on a Mac. But um, since remote PC doesn't give us that option to use the shortcuts, um, I'll just keep going to edit. All right, and I just want to do this one more time. So I'm going to go to edit paste, I'm going to slide it down, place it right there so it's right where it needs to be. This one looks like it needs to move over a little bit. Just, you know, check, make sure everything seems where it needs to be. Now, as you look at this, I have one, two, three, four, eight, basically eight different images here. And, um, we're going to do something different to all eight of them, but I don't need this excess space down here. So now I go back to my original layer, which is, is my background. I go to my crop tool. I slide up till I get to the point where I'm right at the bottom of that last picture. I click the check mark. I, just select the move tool like I said for whatever reason the um, the crop tool does like to turn itself back on when it can so I've already done something kind of cool in that I've uh, gone ahead and I've copied that one image seven times you see I have eight layers now not including the background okay eight layers and you can see where each picture is in the layer and they're in the same order that I pasted them. All right, now for the fun part, okay? We'll take one layer at a time. So you see when I click here, layer one is now highlighted. So now that I've highlighted layer one, I will go to image, I will go to adjustments, and we're gonna go through a lot of the adjustments that we've done, but we're gonna do a couple new ones and we're going to do something different to every single one of these pictures. So for brightness contrast, we pretty much know what happens with brightness contrast. If I brighten that up, you see how much that sun just starts to sparkle. Um, with contrast, I'm going to get 
really crisp, clean lines. If I want less contrast, I would move to the left. Um, so just kind of pick something and we're gonna stick with it. So just click OK. And notice that it only does it to the one. Now, if I tried to do it um, using the adjustments the way I did here, it would do it to all of the all of the layers and we're not looking to do it to all of the layers we're looking to do each layer individually so now i'm going to click on this layer and i'm going to go to image adjustments and we've um, looked at levels before you you remember what levels does levels shows you where your darks are okay and you can see what happens when I bring the darks closer to the lights, there's less, there's less um, uh, variance to the tone. Um, I could also play with the mid-tone if I want there to be some lightness to this, more lightness. Now I've created a wider gap for the lightness. If I were to move in this direction, I would do the opposite. Now there's less mid-tone so I prefer it I think maybe on this end so I will do this and and the other thing you can try I like using the eyedropper I think it's a cool tool to use if you click on the eyedropper I usually go for the for the uh, the highlight when I'm using the eyedropper you click on here somewhere where you think it's a true white wherever you believe your true white is so if that's my true white my picture changes like that, okay? Now, if that's not what I want, um, I can still click Control Z on my computer to go back. If you can't, you can always um, just hit Cancel. Um, if I move that to somewhere else where maybe it's not quite as, uh, as white I get a different effect and actually that's a very cool effect and so I like that and everything we do is really just about what we like so I'm gonna click OK so that's what my second version is gonna look like it's gonna have a much different appearance than the first one okay now we're gonna move down to our third layer so again, I'll go to Image, I'll go to Adjustments, I've done Levels, um, let's try Curves. Now you can do something really weird with curves, you know that. And if, if your menu is in the way, just move it so that it doesn't block what you're doing. Um, you can see how weird things can get with curves if you, just, if you, you know, decide you're going to sit there and play with them. Um, is it something you like? It's hard to say. Um, this is getting very psychedelic. And I'm not exactly sure. It's my thing. But it is unique. Um, I can, again, use my eyedropper, figure out where my light tones are. And again, it changes it completely. I'm going to go back to Control Z. Uh, let's see what happens if I click here. It's amazing how it changes it so absolute when you use your eyedropper. It basically ignores everything you just did. And to be perfectly honest with you, I am such a cool color person, love the blues and whatnot, that I really actually like that. I love the purples and the pinks and the greens. And it's even different than this first one, which the first one still had grays and, and deeper blues in it. Whereas this one is really pulling up cool tones. So I, I'm actually gonna leave it like this, okay? And now I'll move on to my fourth layer. And when I go here, Again, image adjustments. What do we want to try this time? We're going to skip exposure and vibrance. We kind of know what the, what's going to happen there. Hue saturation, of course, we know we can make some major changes with hue saturation. If we leave it set on master, we're going to change all of the colors. So if I simply 
move in a different direction. You can see that the colors are changing just absolutely everywhere, okay? And, and you can be creative with these. So that's what kind of what our point is here is we wanna be creative. Now, if you wanna see what's gonna happen if you only focus on one color, let's say I just want to focus on the greens and here I'm going to change those greens to, let's see, it doesn't seem like we're having, it's not changing much for me. And um, let's see what happens if I click colorize. Nope, don't want to do that. Um, Okay, well, it seems like once I hit master, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm doing the whole thing. Now, if I want to cancel this, you know, cancel what I've done, go back, go to image, go to adjustments, go to hue saturation, and this time skip master and go straight to, say, maybe the yellows, because there there's a lot of yellow pigment in this. I could change that yellow pigment to a pigment that I like better, um, you know, pinks and purples and, and different colors like that. And maybe this is more, you know, more what I'm, I want to uh, achieve. Now, I am curious, I feel like I should still be able to use my master. Uh, yes, I still can use the master. Um, it's just that maybe you know I needed to do it in the opposite direction so you um you determine I would say start with the color first that you think would be a great color to use and then go to master to change the overall look of the colors and then when you decide on what you like it's always this is always the hardest part you can just kind of go through these and it's kind of hard to select and especially when we want things to just have sort of a different tone to them and a different look. There's something about the, the violet and the green that catches my eye so I'm going to hit OK. These are not meant to look realistic. These are not, I am not teaching you this so that you will, you know, create more realistic photos. I'm teaching you these so that you can see the extremes of what these adjustments do and once you understand the extremes when you're working on subtleties, it'll be that much easier because you'll kind of know what each of them is going to do for you. Okay, so I'm going to go to my fifth. I'll go to image. I'll go to adjustment. We just did hue saturation. Color balance um, also deals with color, okay, um, but it deals with your shadows, your midtones, and your highlights. So if we start with the midtones, and it's going to pick up all the midtones in this um, image, and it's going to change those midtones. And right now I'm kind of adding a cyan to it, which is, you know, a real pretty blue green. Do I want to do anything else? Uh, the rich blue is kind of pretty. I'll add a little bit of that. So my midtones now have this rich blue to them. What do I want to do with my shadows? Okay, those are going to be the, the darkest areas of this image. Um, with the shadows, uh, maybe I want to continue with the blues, keep it very, you know, in a very blue tone. If I go into the yellows, it basically turns it green. Um, if I get into magenta, then I'm starting to create purples. Um, I'm probably not going to be crazy about the reds, although I'm not so sure, maybe. The greens get extremely bright. I'm not sure I want to do anything with the shadows, to be perfectly honest with you. And that's kind of your call too. You, you play with it and you decide, I might add just a little blue, okay? The last one that I have not done anything to yet are my highlights. So those are the lightest areas of this image. Do I want those highlights to take on a blue cast, okay? like this. Do I want them to take on a red cast? I probably, knowing myself, will go more for the blues. Um, could add a little 
magenta to that this keep in mind as you do this you're you're almost creating colors i'm mixing cyan and magenta together which is giving me you know sort of a violety feel and um i'm not real sure that i uh want to do that let's see what happens if i add a little yellow to this um I want to look at it in comparison to some of my other images. Make sure I'm getting something different in each of these. So um, that's def that's different. So I will stick with that. All right. Now I'm going to move on to my next image, layer six. Um, excuse me, image. Just use something here. Um. Um. Let's see, the new, the new channel mixer we're not interested in. Invert is always interesting. And there's really nothing else you do to invert. Um, it doesn't give you a lot of any options when, once you invert the image. Um, but it is a, a cool look when you invert the image. Now, if you want to make different changes to it, make the changes first and then invert it, and then it will change what the invert looks like. So I will leave invert like that. Um, now I'm on my seventh layer. I'll go to image adjustments. Um, posterizing is always a cool thing. Now, if I were to posterize, I think I would want to transform the colors first. So if I say, go to selective color because I do like having the ability to really change my colors. Let's see, it's going to look for cyan's nah. Let's let it look for we'll let it look for the blues and see what happens when we change it. Not a lot is happening. Um, now I'm getting some change to it. Um, I'm going to switch over to yellows. This image has a lot of yellows in it, and so if you're trying to kind of get away from the yellows uh, or intensify the yellows, um, then you might want to focus on the yellows. Like this kind of brings in some magentas. I can remove some more of the yellows. Now my sky is getting like a pink look to it. Um, and I'm going to just lower the amount of black in it, which will lighten the entire image. Now if I hit relative, you can see that's kind of the look I get. If I hit absolute, it looks like this. It seems when I hit relative, there's more contrast to it. So um, I might go with that. And now that I've done that, I will now go back to the adjustment that I started with, which was posterizing. And posterizing can, of course, the, the higher the, the levels, the less there is of a posterizing. But um, if I say go down to a six here, even a nine, um, it definitely takes on a much um, a much more graphic look. It doesn't have um, doesn't have the photographic quality that it did before. Now this last one, I want to do something special with that I didn't show you how to do before, and that is our gradient map. Okay. Now typically a gradient map will just come in like one color like that. Whatever color was selected last is what shows up, okay? And um, typically that's not the color you want. Like I don't want it to be gold or brown or anything like that. In fact, I may want it to be a number of colors. So when I click on this, I get the gradient editor. And the gradient editor allows me to change whatever colors are in here. So right now there's a gold. If I click on that little gold box and then click on color, I can change it. And um, 
you know, what color do I want to change it to? Maybe I'll change it to a purple, okay? Um, and I'll click OK. Maybe I want to add another color here, okay? But I don't want it to be purple. So once you click it, you click where it says color. And maybe here I want a deeper purple, okay? Or maybe I want a blue. Actually, adding the blue is kind of an interesting um, way to go. So I'm going to keep the blue. Uh, the next thing, I'm not done yet. I'm going to keep adding some colors to this. So if I click, uh, whoops, I have to click OK first. And then if I click here, um, it's added blue again. And you can see how dark it's gotten. But I don't want it to be the blue. So after I've added that, I'll click on blue. And I will now maybe change that to a green. And maybe I want it to be a really light green, something like that. OK. Um, and I do have white here. OK. And if I want more white to show, I'll drag the white over. Because literally, when you drag these, it changes the amount of color that you have to these things. So now I've just created this gradient map that um, uses the colors I've selected. And now it's completely my own, my own image. Um, gradient options, you have dither. Whoops. Let me uh, first, let me click OK here. OK, now we can try some things. So let's see, when you click dither, didn't see much difference. When you click reverse, there's a big difference, OK? So the entire image has now just kind of moved in the opposite direction. You know, the colors are still there, but it's a completely different look. So, you know, what do you like better? You know, do you like it with your original choice of colors? Or would you like to see it in a completely unique way? And if you feel like, OK, I actually do like this, but maybe not so much white, then maybe drag the white back a little bit. You know, maybe you don't need as much of the white. Maybe the green can start to come through. Maybe we can drag the blue a little bit, and that'll open up some of the purples. And so now maybe this is more what I prefer. OK, so if we kind of back up from this, uh, zoom out, you can see that we have done some creative things to each of these. Um, the first one, of course, is the closest to the original because all we did was uh, changed the, um, the brightness and the contrast. But, but with the other things, we've done some uh, much more creative adjustments. So um, anyway, um, I wanted you to kind of have an opportunity to just, again, continue testing the adjustments. You're going to be using adjustments probably always when you're working in Photoshop, especially when we get into the more creative things. You know, colors do not have to be what the photo dictates they be. You know, photos can be very selective in, in what you choose for them to be. So. Um, go ahead and experiment. Don't forget when you're finished, you go to File. Um, it should already be saved with your name because we did open it. And when we open it, we name it. But just double check. Does it say your name? Does it say Sunset Views or Mountain View or whichever type of photo you're using? Um, and then if it does and all of that's good, then all you should have to do is hit Save. OK, and then it'll say save on your computer. And here's where you want to make sure you're putting it in the right place. And for me, because I'm working directly on my um, my uh, Mac and I'm not working through remote PC for this, I'm going to scroll down till I see Photoshop projects. There's Photoshop projects inside my Photoshop projects. I have a variety of files. One of them is called Mountain View. So I'm going to put it right in that Mountain View folder and click OK. The next thing I'm going to do 
So I'm going to go to File. I'm going to click Save As. Save on your computer. It should immediately go to the same file I just opened. So it should immediately go to Mountain View. But this time, it needs to be a JPEG. So now I change the format to JPEG. So now this is the version that will go to Google Classroom. Okay? So um, again, have fun with that. We've done a few new things this time. You know, the gradient map we did not use last um, with our last assignment. Um, I'm trying to get you used to these adjustments because they're going to be almost the minor part in, in some of the things we do in the future. So knowing that you have all of this at your disposal, hopefully will make you um, feel more creative when you're working with photos for other reasons. Okay. All right. Um, if you have any questions, please ask me, please email me, uh, please come to a help session. All right. You guys have a great day. Bye.